Live tonight, I'm Mark Hanrahan. It's good to have you here. I'm Whitney Ward. All right, let's take a live look right now at Schweitzer Mountain. Due to the cold temperatures, the wind chill, and then, of course, even more cold temperatures on the way, they closed down a lot of chairs and runs today. Silver Mountain had to outright shut down today because of the weather, weather rather, proving, yes, it can be too cold and windy for even ski resorts. Mm. Meantime, closer to home, it's been sunny, but that has not helped the temperatures warm up at all. Nowhere in the inland northwest actually reached above freezing today. Day. It's a little deceiving out there when you see a right. scenery like that and it looks beautiful, <laughs> but we want to turn straight to Chief Meteorologist Tom Sherry. What is the chance it will get out of this below freezing temperature anytime this week? Well, maybe by the weekend the daytime highs will, but the overnight lows are still going to remain very, very cold. And we're expecting the coldest morning tomorrow. What? And it was plenty cold this morning. So we're going to talk about this right now. Arctic blast continues this week. We've got bitter cold wind chills. We're talking about temperature temperatures that are going to be below zero. I think even some air temperatures will actually be in the negative range. Wind gusts still expected between 30 and 40 miles per hour throughout areas of the inland northwest through Wednesday morning. That wind wind chill advisory everywhere you see an effect in blue again that expires tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Forecasted low temperatures tonight all in the single digits at least in most locations and look at lookout pass negative 10. We're talking about seeing negative seven up in Newport and negative two for an overnight low in Bonners Ferry. We take a look at the current temperature right now. We're at 17 degrees. Wind is out of the east northeast at 15 miles per hour, so not blowing as hard today as it was, say, this time yesterday. Still looking for an overnight low of three degrees. We'll look for a high tomorrow of only 24. Should be sunny. And then for the weekend, I've got temperatures, at least the daytime high is warming above freezing. Could even get into the low 40s by Sunday with a slight chance of showers. We're going to go outside right now to meteorologist Thomas Patrick, who is explaining how dangerous the wind chill is and how it can affect you. Yeah, it's not just the uh, it being uncomfortable outside when the wind blows. It starts getting a bit dangerous, especially for those that have to be outside for long durations of time, whether it's willing or not. So when you look at the wind chill for tonight, I think temperature wise, this will be the coldest night of the week, but the winds calming only slightly. So we kind of end up in this area on the chart with wind chills expected between about minus five to around minus 20 through the overnight and straight on through tomorrow morning. So the impacts that has on us is one of two things. If you're outside for too long of a duration, frostbite is one of those impacts. Frostbite is where you get nerve damage uh, like in your fingers or on your extremities. So if you're walking outside without gloves for 30 minutes or 60 minutes, well, you're fingers can really start to freeze over. If that starts to happen, make sure to warm your hands with warm, not hot water. So that way you can get the blood flowing back into your fingers or your extremities. That way they, uh, you don't get any damage that way. But even more serious is hypothermia. That's not just, you know, your hands. That would be your core body temperature dropping due to just prolonged exposure to the elements and the cold temperatures. When your body's internal temperature drops below 95 degrees, that's the onset of hypothermia. Look for uh, look for these symptoms, confusion, shivering, uh, slurred speech, sleepiness. If you get any of these conditions or know anybody with that, make sure to call 911 because hypothermia can be life threatening. Really important reminder, Thomas. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And in light of this severe weather, people have been calling on the city of Spokane to do more to help protect the homeless population. Now, the city said it has worked to expand shelter capacity in recent days, adding about five dozen beds into the system. Crept News' Ian Spay spoke with the city and a local couple working to help the homeless. He joins us from Camp Hope tonight with more. Ian? It is still bitterly cold here near Camp Hope between the winds and the low temperatures, and there are still a number of people camping out here just off of 2nd Avenue in East Central Spokane. Now, in addition to the city of Spokane's efforts, I met with one couple earlier today that is taking it upon themselves to help those experiencing homelessness. Those making up Camp Hope on 2nd Avenue in East Central Spokane have been braving the elements. Challenge definitely made harder by the current cold front sweeping through the area. Those difficulties weren't lost on Jerry and Mary Bishop. Last night it struck me I was outside for five minutes thawing my pipes and I was so freezing to death. I thought, my God, what are the homeless people doing? How are they surviving? The couple decided to bring supplies to Camp Hope, including firewood, fire pits, hot soup, sleeping bags, and pillows. And these are people. These are someone's mom, someone's dad, someone's daughter, someone's brother. 
These are humans. They're beloved people. The bishops aren't a part of a larger group working to help the homeless. The couple are using their own money to bring the camp supplies in an effort to help those on hard times. They were so gracious to have some firewood and some hot soup, yeah. you know. Yeah. Very, very gracious, very grateful, so. you know. So. And this, you know, there's, there's a lot of people here that, that just, they just need a hand. And, you know, not everyone here is here by choice. This comes as the city of Spokane said it's work to expand shelter capacity during the cold snap. City spokesperson Brian Coddington said in the past few days, about five dozen beds have been added to the local shelter system. That includes 40 hotel rooms and 16 beds for women between the Union Gospel Mission and Volunteers of America. The Way Out Shelter has also been providing 41 beds to ease the strain on the nightly shelter system. We were able to add additional space yesterday um, and we're continuing to add space. There are um, spots in the system that are still unused and we focused on areas that were uh, t historically need areas. Today, the city announced it had explored opening a temporary shelter space at a city roads department property on North Florida Street. The location already had fencing for security, along with open space and electricity infrastructure to provide heating. However, after pushback from the surrounding communities, the city scrapped that idea. As we st started talking to stakeholders to include the council members who represent the Northeast and some of the neighbors, uh, they had some very uh, passionate um, objection to it. Coddington said pretty much every time the city has explored a new location for a new shelter site, there has been pushback from the surrounding communities. However, he said the city wants to be able to reach an agreement or a compromise with a neighborhood to locate a new shelter. They do not want to force a neighborhood to accept a new facility. Reporting in East Central Spokane, Ian Smay, Krem 2 News. All right, Ian, thank you very much. And today's bitter cold temperatures continue to challenge drivers around the city and the county. Yesterday we saw falling snow, but today's extreme cold had snow removal crews adapting and using materials that actually work when it gets this cold. Krem 2's Janelle Finch is joining us now live to tell us more about plow crews and how they have had to adapt in this extreme cold weather. Janelle. Hi guys. Yeah, it's no secret that it's a lengthy process between snow coming down to having to navigate snow covered streets and then eventually seeing the pavement. Take a look at what we're seeing right now. This is right off of Lincoln headed down south. Um, according to Washington State Department of Transportation, plows were sent out today with sand over salt. Salt works best in temperatures above 15 to 20 degrees, but with the chilly morning hours we saw today, crews needed something a little more effective. According to the Washington State Patrol, 60 ap accidents happened yesterday. Today, State Patrol only reported five accidents, but drivers still struggled getting around Spokane streets. The extreme cold had plows needing to change their approach to training roads. But just because crews lay down sand, it doesn't mean the ice magically disappears. If you've got ice on the windshield of your car, there's likely ice on the road. Um, and so the sand isn't going to get rid of the ice, it will add traction. So you will still have potentially that surface beneath that can see a little bit of ice. And drivers need to be aware of that. Drive for conditions, reducing your speed, allowing extra travel time. Wind and heavy traffic can also affect how well these materials work. For example, crews sometimes have to strategize material placement in areas with drifting wind to prevent salt and sand ending up on the shoulder and not on the roads. Also, it's better to treat the roads before traffic comes onto the streets. So when plows lay down salt or sand, the material has an opportunity to stick to the ground before cars brush them off off onto the shoulder. I also spoke with the city of Spokane, uh, the communications manager, who told me crews operate 20 hours a day and monitor streets hourly. She says while most main streets are clear, as you can see, traveling on hills um, outside of city limits may require drivers to change their commutes as the snow and cold temperatures stick around. From the Storm Tracker, Janelle Finch, Krem 2 News. Janelle, thank you very much. Well, tickets went on sale this morning for Paul McCartney's first ever show in Spokane, and that's only for American Express card holders, but buyers beware. So if you're seeing crazy ticket prices online right now, it's likely those are third party sellers. They're not even real. That's what the Spokane Public Facilities District is telling us. They say you really should only buy tickets through ticketswest.com or directly through the Spokane Arena website. And you have to be careful. The arena says prices should only range from $99 to $299. If it's higher, it probably is a scalper. Tickets open up for everyone starting on Friday, but again, only buy from Tickets West or through the arena website. And be careful of third party sellers that could mimic 
their websites. Yeah, good warning there. Well, the FBI is investigating a threatening phone call made to the Lapway School District today. The district sent all of the kids in the district home today. The school district received threats on social media yesterday, but police do not believe they are related, they said. So out of an abundance of caution, the Lapway School District will be closed tomorrow as well. The Nez Perce tribe says that the Lapway community members also advise to stay inside. The school district will give further updates regarding the rest of the week soon, they said. And a quick update now after our extensive Creme 2 investigation into the Spokane shock. The final deadline is looming for the indoor football team to secure its place at the Spokane Arena to play home games this upcoming season. As we first told you last week, team owner Sam Adams still has not provided that $128,000 security bond to the Public Facilities District, which manages the arena. After our story aired, Adams did sign his contract with the PFD, but the district says if he doesn't provide that security bond by tomorrow, his contract contract to play at the arena could be terminated. The CEO of the Public Facilities District told me Adams has a history of paying late through all last season, so this year he was required to pay costs up front. As of right now, Adams is already in default with the PFD because the deadline for that security collateral was actually last Tuesday. When he missed the deadline, he was then issued a default letter and five business days to comply. Well, that deadline is tomorrow. What happens if you do not receive that line of credit money by then? In the past, like I said, we have given extensions, but I would say at this point that you wouldn't this be doing will, that. No. The team held open tryouts on Friday. The first game is scheduled for March 18th at the arena. Today, I'm told the PFD has been in contact with Adams. He assures them that line of credit will be in place by tomorrow's deadline, and we'll keep you updated on that for sure. In the meantime, to see our entire Creme 2 investigation into the shock organization, including past season ticket holders who say they're still owed money from the 2020 season that was canceled because of COVID, just text the word shock to 509-448-2000. We'll send that link right to your phone. The United States, together with our allies, will defend every inch of NATO territory. President Joe Biden said Russia's troop deployments into eastern parts of the country are the beginnings of an invasion. More on that situation in Ukraine coming up next.